Just a couple weeks ago, this site was awarded Site of the Day on Awards. If you have been following the channel, you might remember we already covered one of its scroll animations not too long ago. Last month, we rebuilt this really sleek scroll effect from scratch. But when I revisited the site recently, I noticed there were still a bunch of other cool animations we hadn't touched yet. One that really stood out to me was this layered image scroll animation. As you scroll, the image gradually reveals itself using multiple stacked layers and a custom mask, creating this really trippy dimensional effect. To my knowledge, we haven't done anything quite like this on the channel before, so last weekend, I sat down and recreated a similar scroll experience using GSAP and scroll trigger. As you can see, the section gets pinned when it enters the viewport, and as you scroll further, the words slide outward while the masked image scales up from the center. Each layer scales independently, which gives it that surreal layer drivel. Toward the end of the scroll, a new header text fades in word by word, tying the animation together with a polished finish. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to create this type of scroll animation using very basic JavaScript, GSAP, and scroll trigger. If you find this kind of content helpful and want to see more reveals of award-winning web animations, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Before we jump into the code, let's quickly talk about the assets you'll need for this animation. First, you'll need a base image. This will be the main visual that gets revealed during the scroll. Once you have that, the next step is to create a transparent PNG version of the same image that we'll use as a mask on the top layers. To do that, we need to remove the background from the original image. You can use any background remover tool for this, but I personally used this Adobe background remover. It's free and super easy to use. Just upload your image, let it process and download the result as a PNG. This new image will have a transparent background showing only the subject. Once you have both files, the original image and the cutout PNG, drop them into your project folder. Later in the build, we'll use this transparent PNG as a clipping mask on the stacked image layers. This will allow us to show just the masked portion on the top layers while the full image stays underneath. Alright, let's move on and set up the HTML structure. For this project, we are going to need three main sections, a hero section at the top, a banner section where all the animation magic happens and an outro at the end. To keep the page from looking too empty, I'll add an H1 with some placeholder text inside both the hero and outro sections. These are optional, you can leave them blank if you want. Now let's focus on the banner section, which is the core of this animation. Inside the banner, we'll first create a wrapper div called banner image container. This will hold all our image layers and will later animate its scale to create the trivial effect from zero to full screen. The first image we add inside this container will be the base image wrapped in a div with the class image. This version of the image will sit at the very bottom and remain fully visible throughout, no mask applied to it. After that, we'll duplicate the same structure 6 more times, but for each of those, we'll add an extra class called mask. These are the masked layers that will sit on top of the base image. Using CSS, we'll stack these layers on top of each other and apply the transparent PNG as a mask. That way, only the cutout portion of the subject is visible on these layers. Later in JavaScript, we'll assign each layer a slightly smaller initial scale value to create that layered depth effect as they scale up during scroll. Next, inside the banner image container, we'll add a div called banner header. This will hold another h1 element which will animate in word by word as the scroll animation nears the end. Finally, outside the image container, we'll create one more div called banner intro text container. This will hold the two intro words which slide away from each other at the start of the scroll. And that's pretty much all the HTML structure we need. Let's move on to styling everything with CSS. First, I'm importing the font we'll be using across the site. I'll be using instrument serif to match that elegant editorial vibe you saw in the demo. Next, I'm resetting the default margin and padding and setting the box sizing to border box for more predictable sizing. For the body, I'll apply our serif font to give everything a clean, cohesive look. Then, I'll make sure all the images are set to fill their container, crop nicely with object fit, and are ready for smooth transforms by applying wheel change. Next, I'll define the heading style. We'll give it a large, prominent size with a tighter line height to keep the text compact and bold. 
Now let's move on to the section styling. Each section will take up the full width and height of the screen. We'll apply soft off white background, dark text color, and make sure anything that overflows gets hidden. For the hero and outro sections, I'll center the content both vertically and horizontally using Flexbox. Inside those sections, I'll also set the headings to be a little narrower and centered just to balance the layout visually. Now let's move on to the core animation section, the banner. I'll set the main image container to fill the full width and height of its section and optimize it for transforms since we'll be scaling it later. Then for each image wrapper inside the container, I'll absolutely position them to stack on top of each other and fill the space. For the masked layers, I'll apply the transparent PNG we created earlier as a mask. This ensures only the cutout portion of the image is visible on those top layers. I'll also center and scale the mask properly so everything lines up. Now for the headline that appears during the scroll animation, I'll center it both vertically and horizontally. Give it a slightly narrower width and align the text to the center. We'll also raise this index to make sure it sits above the image tag. Moving on to the intro text that pushes out at the beginning, this container is also centered vertically and stretches across the full width of the screen. I'll use flex layout here with a small gap between two words and push it to the top layer using the index. From each of the two text blocks, I'll make sure they grow equally and set them up for transform based animation. Specifically for the first word, I'll align the text to the right so that it moves outward from the center correctly. And lastly, I'll add a quick media query to adjust the layout on smaller screens. In those cases, I'll shrink the width of the heading elements so everything fits nicely and stays readable. That's all the styling we need for now. Let's move on to the JavaScript and bring this animation to life. At the top of the script, I'm importing the GSAP core library along with three additional tools we'll need, scroll trigger, split text, and lenis. Scroll trigger is what we'll use to sync our animations with scroll progress. Split text helps us break up our headline into separate words so we can animate them individually. And Lenis is a lightweight library that gives us smooth scrolling with better control. Next, we'll wait for the DOM to fully load by wrapping everything inside a listener for DOM content loaded event. Inside this event, we'll first register the GSAP plugins we need, scroll trigger, and split text. Now, here comes a block of code you have probably seen me use in almost every scroll based project. I've taken this directly from the Lenis documentation. What it does is, first, it creates a new Lenis instance, then we hook it into GSAP's scroll trigger so that scroll trigger updates every time the page scrolls. After that, we tell GSAP to drive the Lenis animation loop by using its internal ticker. And finally, we disable lag smoothing just to keep the scroll behavior precise and in sync, especially when we are dealing with pinned sections or long scroll distances. This setup is pretty much the standard way to connect Lenis and GSAP so that they stay in sync and scroll triggered animations feel buttery smooth. Alright, now let's move on to selecting our DOM elements and preparing the layout for animation. First, I'm grabbing the main image container, the one that wraps all our image layers. We'll animate this as a whole, especially to scale it up from nothing to full size as we scroll. Next, I'm selecting all the intro text elements using GSAP's two-array utility. We'll be moving these words outward at the beginning of the scroll, so we need to grab both of them. Then, I'm doing the same for all the masked image layers. These are the ones that sit on top of the base image and will animate that scale independently to create that stacked layer defect. After that, I'm targeting the headline text inside the banner header. This is the big line that appears word by word at the end of the scroll animation. To animate it, we first need to break the full heading into individual words. For that, I'm using GSAP's split text plugin. Here, we pass the heading element into split text and specify that we want to split it by words. This gives us back an array containing each word as a separate DOM element. So now instead of animating one big chunk of text, we can animate each word individually just like we saw in the original reference. Right after splitting the text, I set the opacity of all those words to zero. This makes sure they are completely hidden when the scroll starts. We'll animate their opacity back to one later on as we approach the end of the scroll section. 
Next, I loop through all the masked image layers. Those are the six copies of the image with the transparent cutout. For each of these layers, I set a different starting scale value. The very top layer starts the smallest and each layer below it is slightly larger. So we are basically stacking the layers with a stepped scale difference between them. This creates a sense of visual depth. Even though it's just flat images, it gives the illusion that the topmost layer is further away and grows faster as you scroll. And finally, I set the scale of the entire image container to zero. This means everything starts off invisible, shrunken down completely. We'll animate this container to gradually scale up as we scroll through this action, which makes the image feel it's growing out from the center of the screen. Next, we'll use scroll trigger to connect all these pieces to the actual scroll behavior. All right, so now let's create our scroll trigger. We'll start by setting the trigger, which is the banner section. That means this animation will begin when the banner section enters the viewport. Next, we define the start and end of the scroll animation. The start point is when the top of the banner section hits the top of the viewport. And for the end, I'm making the animation last for four full screen heights. So as we scroll through that length, the animation will progress from 0 to 1. Then I am setting pin through which locks the banner section in place while the animation is happening. This lets everything inside the banner animate independently of the scroll while the section stays on screen. Pin spacing is set to true which ensures that the rest of the page content still scrolls correctly after the banner ends. And scrub 1 is what ties the animation smoothly to the scroll progress. It creates a direct connection between how much you scroll and how much the animation progresses. Now comes the most important part, the on update callback. Inside this function, we are using the scroll progress, which is a value that goes from 0 to 1. So at the top of the scroll, progress is 0, at the end, it's 1. And everything in between is a smooth decimal value as you scroll. Now first we scale up the entire image container based on scroll progress. So when progress is 0, the container is fully shrunk and when progress reaches 1, the container is fully scaled to its normal size. Next, we loop through each masked image layer to animate their individual scales. We are doing a bit of math here to calculate the scale for each layer again. First, we set the initial scale for each layer. The top layer starts smallest and each layer below it gets slightly bigger. This is the same logic we used earlier when initializing the layers. Then we calculate something called layer progress, which is just scroll progress divided by 0 0.9. Why 0 0.9? It is because we want all the layer animations to be done by the time progress hits 0 0.9. We also use min method to make sure the value doesn't go above 1. After that, we interpolate between the layer's initial scale and its final scale, which is 1. This gives us the trippy layer drivel as each layer grows at its own pace. Next, we animate the intro text, those two words on the sides. We only want this to happen before progress reaches 0.9. So we check if the scroll progress is less than or equal to that. Then we calculate text progress, which is just progress divided by 0.9. This normalizes the value to be between 0 and 1 during that range. We also calculate how far we want to move each word, half the width of the screen. That way, the words slide outward from the center and creates a clean, symmetrical effect. We apply the negative movement to the left word and the positive movement to the right word. This gives us that visual push apart effect at the beginning of the scroll. And finally, we animate the heading text word by word. This part kicks in when progress is between 0.7 and 0.9. We calculate header progress, which is how far we are between those two points. We normalize that by subtracting 0.7 and dividing by 0.2. So again, we get a value from 0 to 1. Then we loop through each word in the heading. For each word, we define a start delay and an end delay. Basically, how long to wait before the word starts appearing and how long it should take to fully appear. These are based on the index of the word in the array and how many total words there are. We then calculate the opacity of each word based on that timing. If scroll has passed the word's full delay, we show it completely. If we are in the middle of its animation window, we gradually fade it in. Outside that range, we handle the edge cases. If the scroll is less than 0.7, we make sure all the words stay invisible. If it's greater than 0.9, we make sure all of them are fully visible, just to avoid any jittery fades in at the end. 
So in this summary, the scroll trigger setup pins the banner section, tracks the scroll progress, and choreographs three major parts, the image container scaling up, the mask layers expanding in depth, and the text animations both at the start and the end. That wraps up the core logic of the animation. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.